<laughs> Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to show you the best way to cook your picanha. In the last five years, the picanha has become extremely popular in Europe as well as in the Netherlands. Of course, it doesn't come from Europe and in the Netherlands and it doesn't come from the United States either. It comes from South America and more specifically, Brazil. However, it might be dangerous to talk about that because there are some other countries in South America that claim the same thing. A bro who calls dibs first has dibs. And it doesn't come from that place either because every cow in the whole wild world has this piece of meat. Now in the Netherlands, we call this het staartstukje. However, I'm gonna skip all that. I'm just gonna focus on what the best way of cooking is. No matter which country you're from, no matter what you're accustomed to, I just wanna focus on what works best for you and for this piece of meat. So I bought some beautiful picanhas. Beautiful dark red meat, great intermuscular fat, really good looking pieces of meat. There are two important features about the picanha. The fat cap, and it has to be around this size. This is actually perfect, like a quarter inch or half a centimeter thick. And underneath that lays a beautiful piece of red meat. Actually, cooking a picanha is not difficult. It might be one of the easiest things to do Right, let me show you a technique that is mostly used in Europe to cook a picanha. It's called the reverse sear method. I'm gonna use this barbecue to explain the method. First of all, I'm gonna open the lid, then I'm going to turn on the gas. Now I've created a direct zone and an indirect zone. I'm going to place my picanha on the cutting board. I'm gonna score the fat cap, creating a maximum amount of surface on the fat cap that will help with rendering out the fat. I'm not carving through the fat, I'm just carving in it. And now we created all that extra surface that lays in the fat cap. And it's also room for us to put salt in. An important part of eating picanha is having a salty, fatty crust. It makes the picanha stand out from any other piece of meat. Now don't worry about putting too much salt on the fat cap because most of that is gonna render off while cooking. I'm gonna place the picanha over indirect heat with the thickest part pointing towards the fire. Then I'm gonna close the lid and I'm going to let this cook until it hits a core temperature of 52 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna let this beautiful picanha rest for at least five minutes to stable out that temperature that's going into my picanha. And in the meantime, I'm gonna fire up my sizzle zone. It still needs its final sear. That's the second phase of the reverse seared method. <laughs> that is what you call a reverse seared picanha steak. It's a thing of absolute beauty. Listen to this. I'm gonna cut into this picanha so we can take a look inside. A beautiful juicy pink piece of meat. Look at how juicy that is. Perfect rendered out fat cap. A little bit of a smoke ring from cooking the picanha and juicy and tender on the inside. Now that is how most people cook a picanha at home. It's foolproof and you have that result, that beautiful, succulent, delicious meat. It tastes so fantastic. What more do you want? But there's another way, the way they do it in restaurants. And I'm a lucky guy. I have something that they have in restaurants. This is a rotisserie just like they have in their churrascarias. And churrascaria is a name that they have in South America for the restaurants where they sell barbecue. Churrasco, barbecue, churrascaria. And in these restaurants, they have these boxes sitting over fire, loaded with meat, rotating around. And before I can cook on this grill, I first need to remove this and fire up my charcoal. I'm gonna put some premium lump charcoal in my grill. I'm placing in some fire starters, light them up, and wait till my charcoal's fully lit up. Let's prepare our picanha for this cooking method. Important before you start doing anything is to look at the picanha and figure out in which way the grains are running. And if you pull on the meat, 
you can clearly see that there are grains running in this direction. And for the end result, we want perfect sliced picanha, which means it needs to be cut against the grain. The reason that I'm already talking about cutting this picanha is because I need to put it on the skewers, our rotisserie skewer. So I'm gonna cut it against the grain. First, I'm gonna square it up. Then I'm gonna cut my first steak, which is around three to four fingers thick. Out of this picanha, I can get at least three steaks. When I put my picanha on the skewer, I need to think ahead. How much heat can I put on my picanha? And since I have more heat in the center of my barbecue, I put the thickest piece of meat in the center of the skewer. So I'm gonna start with the smallest steak and I'm going to arch it and secure it. Followed by the largest steak, arch it again and skewer it. Now I have the whole picanha on. Time to season the fat cap with some salt. And as a salt, I'm using a light sea salt. This is a finishing salt that is shaped into pyramids. The pyramid shaped salt will dissolve very, very easily. Now this is ready to go on the rotisserie. And this way they can cook a lot of picanha for a lot of people at the same time. And the theory behind this is very, very easy. It rotates, the fat cap melts because of the high heat. The steaks on the lowest position build up a beautiful brown crust, while the steaks on the highest position slowly come up to temperature. The fat will render down, but sticks to the meat. And because of the speed of the rotation, it will stay there frying the outside of that meat. That's the secret of a tasty churrascaria picanha. Once I build up that beautiful crust on the outside of this picanha, you place it in a pan like this. Take your knife and slice only the caramelized outside of the picanha. So slice off the outside, just like you would with shawarma. Once you slice it off, the pink inside reappears and you can see that this is not fully cooked yet. So that's going to go back on the rotisserie and it's continue to rotate over the fire until it builds up a crust. And that's how you serve your picanha in a churrasqueria. <laughs> not everyone might have one of these, but you can use one of these that's an easy replace so that doesn't mean you don't have to use this technique because you don't have this you can have this or you could do what i love to do i like to cook picanha in the most simple way ever i tried every method every technique imaginable except for sous vide i haven't tried sous vide yet well besides the point my favorite way of cooking picanha is using a grill like this and then using a tool like this. This is a skewer and it's as simple as that. If I put my picanha on this, I am in full control. So let's fire up a Napoleon charcoal professional, put some charcoal in, couple of fire starters and wait until it's fully lit up. I have it running at a temperature of 350 degrees Celsius, that is, 700 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Even if I stand here, I want to step back from the heat. That's how hot this is. Now that heat is going to give me a lot of control. Now I have a direct zone, an indirect zone, and I can play around with that heat. If need be, I can use a poke to move around the charcoal or scoop it up and move it to another tray. And even better, I got a handle that allows me to lower the charcoal bed. All those options are gonna be in my favor when I cook picanha. It's not just sitting on a rotisserie at one or two set levels. It's all the control that I have to cook the picanha to absolute perfection. Get the best crust, get the best Maillard reaction, get everything just right. So let's start with this picanha, cut it up into steaks, and then I'm gonna place these on my skewer. Because I'm not cooking for the masses, I'm just going to select two steaks, put some salt on the fat caps, and now I'm going to cook these manually. The first step is to place the skewer over the coals. And the direct radiation heat of the coals are going to melt that fat cap and it's going to let that fat drip into the fire. And that's why I'm regularly going to rotate it, making sure that the fat and the oil doesn't burn up my picanha. 
This is all manual labor, but it's a great way to keep an eye on your steak. For instance, I just put it on, I rotated it, I see that the color is changing, so I know I got some heat. However, there's a lot of moisture in that steak, especially in the beginning. And that means that the outside is not gonna get a crust unless I turn up the heat more. And the way that I do this is by elevating the charcoal bed. You can see that we instantly have more heat, the fat start dripping, I'm getting a beautiful caramelization on my fat cap and when I get a flare up from the melting fat, I'm moving my skewer away from the flare ups. And that's how I make my perfect cooked picanha. I got a beautiful, even divided crust, nice caramelization on my steak. And once I slice into it, I'm gonna expose that beautiful, pink meat together with a little bit of crunchy fat cap. This is what perfect picanha is all about. No matter what your personal preference is, either you like to go to a restaurant and get it right there, do it on your rotisserie at home, do a reverse here, or do it by hand just the way I like to do it. It doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with your picanha. And this, this is the one that satisfies me. Mm-hmm.